video recently, I was talking about a dog, Dixie, and saying that Dixie loves me. Look at who we got here. It's Dixie Doodle Hopper. Dixie, sit. Now, if you notice Dixie checking me out, see how she looks at me? Dog worships me. Her mother knows this. Dixie will do whatever I want, like just, just by me sneezing. Seriously, Dixie's awesome. She's a real butt kisser, aren't you, Dix? Dixie. Look at the Dixie. Dixie did a board and train about two years ago. Sit. It's a good girl. And that's sort of, that's not true. That's not really true. And I think that a big problem with people is that they have unrealistic expectations upon their dog. In other words, there's a lot of this like, I gave the dog everything. And what people are saying by, when they say this is that they gave the dog unconditional love and the dog is supposed to like, you know, respond in like a trained way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your dog cannot love you, okay? This, this notion that the dog has like psychic abilities and it can, you know, see, see how much you love it. So it's supposed to, you know, just respond appropriately, not jumping on people, not barking at people, staying off the, you know, stuff like that. It's just foolish and it's just so common. And it really stems, uh, you know, from this like idea that dogs are equal to us and dogs, dogs experience love. You know, dogs don't experience any of the human emotions, okay? It's a fact. To experience a human emotion, you have to be a human. Your dog is completely different. Your dog doesn't even think. It just responds, okay? They don't ponder thought. If you're not around, they're not like, oh, you know, where's, where's Peter at? That doesn't exist. It doesn't. Your dog just responds. So if you're, if you're, if you're away from it, it doesn't think about you until... It smells you again. It sees you, you know? Oh, there, there's my owner again. That's how it is. So this notion that, that your dog can love you, it's, it's foolish. And when you hear me say it, I just want to be perfectly clear. When you hear me say it in a video, I am meaning the dog likes me a lot. In no way do I ever think that a dog loves me. And if your dog is normal, this is the truth, if your dog's normal and you die, this hurts people. It does, but it's the truth. And you die, your dog will not be depressed. Your dog, nothing will go on with your dog. Your dog, if your dog keeps getting food and attention from someone else, your dog will just be normal. You should, yay, great. They don't have what we have. They don't have the gray matter that we have. And they're lucky for it. it I'm not saying... I'm not putting the dog down in any way by saying this. They're better off than us, you know? We're the ones with this, like, emotional mind, you know? We, we have to ponder thought. We think about, we, you know, melt metal from the Earth's crust and form it into a spaceship and send it out in space. Your dog will never be able to do that. Your dog does not have the brain that you have, and to put your dog... On that level, as a human, you're being unfair to the dog. And those kind of dogs that are put in that position are very stressed out. It's better to tell the dog that it's a dog and make sure that it knows its position in the human world. It's when the dog start, you let the dog start making decisions or you think that the dog has the ability to make a good decision and it really doesn't. It's a dog living in a human world. Everything that your dog should do is either going to be instinctual or trained into them. And the instinctual stuff about the dog, a lot of times it's really bad. You know, they bark, lunch, and then they bite. The most common behavioral problem in dogs is aggression. Keep that in mind. We got 4 million dogs dying every year in shelters. That's in shelters alone. We're not counting backyards and shit like that in animal shelters in the United States, you know? And compared to some countries, we're really good, but we're really a humane country, which we're not. Do you get it? It doesn't make any sense to put the dog, like look at the dog in an anthropomorphic way. It doesn't, it's nothing like you. It, there, there's more things about your dog that are like a polar bear than a human. Your dog is more like a horse. Your dog is more like a pig. Your dog is more like other animals. 
we're animals, yes, but we're so unusual in that we, we have this brain. It's not your dog, your, the horse, the pig. Not even a chimp is close to us. And that's our closest living relative is the chimp. Now, if you're ever going to make comparisons in animals, it has to be human chimp. And that's sort of a stretch at times. I'm not saying that the chimps don't have something that we have, but they certainly don't have all that we have. So what I'm saying is, it, I'm not saying anything bad about the chimp. I'm not saying anything bad about the dog. I'm just saying that they're different than you. If you put un, unrealistic expectations on them about their behavior and their emotional abilities, you're going to have problems. Treat the dog like it's a like it's a dog. If you if you love your dog, treat it like it's a dog, and it will be less stress on your dog. And that's what you sh you should be looking for. You want less stress on your dog. The, remember, the calm dog is a happy dog. Just because your dog's running around with a wagging tail doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's happy or it loves you. What it means is it's excited. Look at that dog. Oh, here comes, a, here comes my neighbor's dog. Here, heal. Dixie, whoa. I gotta put the camera down. Heel, here.